have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Welcome to Land to episode 11 of Fear Busters. This episode is titled, New Beginning. We live at a time with the coronavirus, and even during it, there's other pains and sorrows that are going on in, in the society around us. And the question arises, as Christians who believe in Jesus, who are disciples, how should we live? What should we do? So please enjoy this episode, and I pray that this would be a time where we can think through some of the things that we have gone through together. Is this working? Okay. Hi guys! I mean, hi me! It's um, January 1st, 2020. It's New Year, so Happy New Year to everyone! Right now we're at church and we're waiting for our friends. I wonder where they are. Lana! Oh my god! Oh! Are you guys vlogging? Yeah. Okay, what? Okay, so there's important news. Actually, it's really scary, but... Um, so there, I heard the news and apparently there's like this new disease called Corona. Well, like, it's all the way in China, so it's like... Okay. <laughs> Dude, okay, I mean... Didn't the news say it's all the way from Asia? We're gonna be fine. Yeah, we're like, fine. Don't I don't worry, think don't worry. I don't think there's anything to worry about. Yeah. I think. Oh, service is starting. Buddy oh. car. Buddy car. Yeah. Oh. Bye. 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 Okay, we're gonna go to service now. So, peace out. Hi. So today is January twenty second, two thousand twenty, and I'm just here hanging out with Lena. We're having a picnic. Picnic. And apparently, the first case of Corona reached the U.S. But honestly, like, it's never gonna reach us. Like, it's fine. True. I mean, it's never gonna reach us. Yeah. Like, as long as a person stays quarantined and, like, isolated, like, every day will be fine. So, no need to worry. I mean, I hope. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. Hi, it's March 11, 2020. And right now, I'm doing my math homework. She gave, like, so much homework. Like, look at that. Like, oh my god, like, does she even, like... Yeah? Look, look, look at this. Outside. What? 114 countries. 100. And 4,291 people have lost their lives. What? Thousands more are fighting for their lives in hospitals. Oh my God. In the days and weeks ahead, we expect to see the number of cases, the number of deaths, and the number of affected countries climb even higher. Oh my God. WHO has been assessing this outbreak around the clock and we're deeply concerned both by the alarm oh my gosh i need to tell us rachel and caleb sorry i'm ending it here their school outside of seattle is closed one of many districts in states across the country that sent students home today is march 13 2020. i think it was the middle of sixth period but yeah the school announced that it'll be closed until further notice due to covid 19. And I mean, everything is just so unexpected and I'm actually starting to get scared. I just wish I hugged my friends and said goodbye to them. But it's okay. I mean, I'm sure we'll get to go back, right? There's a mutuality and there's a recognition of our interdependence that requires of this moment that we direct a statewide order for people to stay at home. It is March 23, 2020. We were ordered to stay at home starting today, and it's so frustrating because Eleanor and I were supposed to go to the movies this weekend. But I can't believe how horrible it's become. Like, it's actually starting to scare me knowing that I have the possibility of getting the virus.
Around the world, the number of confirmed coronavirus cases has now passed 2 million, and there have been 128,011 deaths. 500,996 people have recovered from the virus. Hi, today is April 16, 2020. Already day 24 of quarantine. Wow, I mean, not gonna lie, I do miss my friends, but I can't risk getting the virus. We do have to social distance and... Okay, honestly, no one is social distancing. We're on a lockdown. It's not that hard. You Like, if you're gonna go outside, wear a mask, stay six feet apart. We have to social distance. There's no cure right now. And I'm just worried about the elders, like especially my parents or my grandparents. It's harder for them. I just, I hope people realize that there's no cure and that they would actually take this seriously. Hello, it's April 23rd, 2020, and right now it's day 31 of quarantine. Online school is a lot harder than I thought it would be, plus my internet's not working because everyone in the family has been using Wi-Fi. And I've been using this new video call Zoom, but whenever I use it, I literally can't hear anything because it keeps cutting off Wi-Fi issues. And um, online school is pretty hard, but I kind of like it because I can do homework whenever I want. And I wonder how long I have to do this for. Ellie, eat dinner! What did I tell you about knocking? <laughs> I'm not gonna knock. Oh, okay. Um, Ooh, well, you're vlogging? Mm. What's up, vlog? Okay, then I'm gonna end it here. Bye! It is May 3rd, 2020. Everything is closed. Church is closed. School is closed. Missions got cancelled. I was so excited for VBS. I don't know what's happening. I, I really miss eating out. I don't want to eat kogi and boba. And I miss my friends and my life is so frustrating. And quarantine is so... It's making me fight with Eleanor. I don't know what to do. I just don't feel safe. And I just see everyone walking, and I'm just so scared. <laughs> you have just seen a short clip, a compilation, of what it felt like for the past couple of months. Maybe some of you resonated with just one scene. Maybe some of you resonated with a lot of the scenes that you've seen so far. Our world is going through so much pain, so much sorrow. And in this world that we live in, what is the thing that we need to be reminded of? What is the thing that we need to keep our focus on? Today's message comes from Luke chapter 17, about a story where Jesus is passing between Samaria and Galilee. As he's going doo -doo 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 -doo, on the way, he encounters 10 men at a distance. Luke 17, it says this, And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance. Not just ten ordinary men, but ten lepers. What does that mean? Lepers means ten people who are suffering from the disease leprosy. If I may just briefly explain what leprosy is, it's actually a very terrible disease and a very contagious disease. It's a disease where it numbs your body, where your body starts not feeling things, and it starts rotting away at your skin and different body parts. So it's a very painful and terrible disease. And because the disease was so terrible, in Leviticus, in the Old Testament, the law was this. If anyone, anyone in the community was found to be a leper with leprosy, they were actually cast out, away from the community, and they had to live by themselves, apart from everyone else, until they were healed. So if they actually had leprosy their entire life, they would have to just live by themselves, cast out, and they couldn't talk to their parents or their friends. The only way that they could be included back in into the community was if they were clean. And how would they know that they were clean? 
if they were clean, what they would have to do is they would have to go to the priest, and the priest would be the one who would examine them and to see, hmm, are you clean? They would look through the different criteria, and once the priest says, this person is clean, that's when he was admitted or brought back into the rest of the community. The story that we see is about 10 lepers. Apparently, the lepers, it was hard for them to live by themselves, so they, the lepers would sometimes form a community so that those others with lepers would help each other. And we see that there was 10 of them. Jesus sees them from far away. And they start yelling from a distance. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. I know I just said it in a kind of a quiet, nice voice, but most likely they yell at the top of their lungs to make sure that Jesus heard them. Maybe intentionally they got in Jesus' way, hoping that Jesus would pass by, having a little bit of hope, thinking maybe Jesus could heal me. And they are shouting, Jesus, heal us, heal us, have mercy on us. And it's interesting Jesus' response. In verse 14, it says this. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. What does that mean? Remember, they would only go and show themselves before the priest. When? When they were healed. So what Jesus is saying is, go. You're going to be healed. So imagine these 10 people, lepers, going towards the priests. And in the Bible, it actually doesn't speak more than that of exactly what happened on their way. But this is my imagination. I'm sure they were full of hope and expectation. Wow, I'm going to be new again. I'm going to be clean again. What am I going to do? After I'm going to be clean, I'm going to go see my parents. I'm sure some of them wanted to go see their friends or possibly even family members they haven't seen in a long time. Their minds were probably filled with things that they wanted to do. They were on their way. And the Bible says, and as they went, they were cleansed. Imagine how excited you would have been if you were struggling with this leprosy for years and you're healed. So many things to do. I mean, as you and I are stuck in this coronavirus era, I'm already thinking once things are opening up, this is what I want to do, that's what I want to do. I want to eat, go eat Korean barbecue. I want to go to the theme park. You know, there's a list of things that we want to do once things open up. Here, the lepers had probably a lot of things that they had in mind. But it's interesting how the story continues. Verse 15, it says, Then one of them, then he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. Continuing on, verse 16. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. What happened to the other nine? There were ten that were healed, but only one person comes back to Jesus. And we see that the more important part of this story actually focuses on that one person who came back. We're given absolutely no other information regarding the other nine. Who they were, what they did. But this one person, the Samaritan, comes back. And he praises Jesus and he worships Jesus. And it's interesting, he falls at Jesus' feet and worships Jesus. What is Jesus' response? He says, Were not ten cleansed, where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. The story in Luke chapter 17 is about ten lepers being healed. But only one man was saved. That's actually really important for us to remember. What is it, this focal point, the central message of this passage? It is that you and I, including these 10 lepers, we are created in the image of God. 
And in the image of God, what does that mean that we are created in God's image? It means that we are called to worship. That the most important thing that we need to remember is, are we worshiping God? These ten people were cleansed, but only one worshiped before the Lord. As we go through this coronavirus era, as we see very troubling things in the news, the thing that we need to remember is, are we worshiping the Lord? It can be really easy for us to be distracted, especially as we transition our worship from being at church to online worship and we're worshiping at home. Sometimes our hearts can be like, ah, worship is easy. Maybe you're just doing it in your pajamas. I'm not saying worshiping in your pajamas is wrong, but if by doing so, if our hearts, if our worshiping the Lord, if that earnesty is not there or lacking, or if that's de- deteriorating, that's something that we really need to think about. Just like here, 10 were cleansed, but only one came back before the Lord and worshiped him. As I was meditating on this passage, The message that God gave me was this. Johan, are you worshiping? Sure, I'm doing things. And as a matter of fact, preparing for fear busters, doing this, trying to be a good dad, trying to be a good husband, doing this, doing that. But in the midst of all this, am I losing the most important thing, which is to worship God? My question for you today is this. Amongst all the things that are going on in this world, are you worshiping the Lord? Because this morning, God is calling you and I to worship Him. And if we've lost sight of that, we've lost the most important thing. Brothers and sisters, I pray as you are watching this, that God is putting some desire in your heart to worship again, to give praises to Him. And to be like, God, yes, this world is going through pain. Yes, we feel stuck at home. But God, thank you for calling me as your child. Here in this passage, we saw 10 people who were distance away from a far away that they cried out. This distance, it wasn't just a physical distance. It was a spiritual distance. They were sinners before the holy God and they could not worship. But what does Jesus do? He restores who they are so that they can stand before as worshipers. But although they were restored, only one comes back. That's a very strong message that all of us need to really listen to. We need to remember, are we worshiping the Lord? So at this time, I want to call you. I want to really ask you. I know many of you are at home listening to this right now. But would you stand up at this time? And would you praise God with me, singing together this song, Let's Praise Together. Woke up this morning, feeling kind of blue. A little sad, but I know just what to do. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. I have learned that I can go to Jesus He lifts me up whenever I need it Whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh When I'm worried, when I'm feeling down That's when God comes through, turns it all around Yeah, He gives me joy Every situation keeps my spirits high
God comes through and turns it all around. Yeah, he gives me joy in every situation. Keeps my spirits high no matter what I'm facing. At this time, you just sang this praise. Can I just pray for us? I want us just to pray together and, and ask the Lord to revive a desire within us, to revive the joy of salvation. Let me pray for you guys. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you when we praise you. We thank you for reminding us that we are called to worship, that you have changed our identity from being an unclean sinner to a righteous clean person that can stand before the presence of the Lord. So Lord, here we are. We stand before your presence. I pray that Lord, you would revive a desire and this yearning to worship you. If many of us are struggling through these times, I pray Lord that you will restore us. Give us a joy as we worship your name. And Lord, for the surrounding people who are struggling, who are not able to worship, we want to pray for them. Lord, would you bring healing in this land? Would you bring reconciliation? Lord, would you reign in this place? Lord, we thank you. We proclaim your goodness today as well. In your son Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Wow, Piohan's sermon was very encouraging. I understand that the situation is something that none of us want to experience. But in the midst of all the chaos, we need to thank God for all He has given us and glorify His name. He has a plan and there is a purpose for all of this, even if things get scary and tough. We need to lift our voice in prayer and worship. There are so many things to pray about. Maybe we can come up with different topics every day. Dear friends, dear friends, dear friends, dear friends, although it is important to pray, it is also important to lift our voices up in worship. We may be stuck at home and maybe every day feels the same, but remember we are called to live a new perspective. One that glorifies the powerful and loving God. Coronavirus is scary, but God gives us hope because he is more powerful. This is a new beginning. We can still move on with our life with no fear and continue to praise God.
Thank you for worshiping with us, and I pray that God gave you joy and the desire to worship through our episode. This episode, The New Beginning, we talked about that the most important thing is worship, that through the coronavirus or times of difficulty, or as a matter of fact, even in good times, that we need to be worshiping in the Lord in all seasons of life. So I pray that all of you may continue to be worshiping this week. So have a wonderful week. God bless. Let's end with our chant. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Have a great week.